I know how overwhelming it is trying to search for information on diabetes on the internet. Being told to eat healthier sounds so vague. Everywhere you look, there is conflicting information or people trying to sell you vitamins or supplements. It can feel really hard to figure out what to do, what's true and what's not. Look no further because we are here to present you the hard facts, specifically when it comes to diabetes. My name is Charmaine and I am the dietitian that helps people reverse type 2 diabetes. And my name is Galia. I'm a coach in the Reversing Diabetes program specializing in exercise. And today we're going to talk about hacks to accelerate your reversing diabetes journey. Social media is saturated with hacks to lower your blood sugar levels, but which hacks are actually supported by science and actually have meaningful and noticeable impact on your blood glucose levels? The first hack that we're going to talk about today is walking. So walking is a super helpful tool that can help you lower your blood glucose levels pretty immediately. So how does this happen? The first thing is walking helps us enhance our insulin sensitivity. So having an immediate impact, physical activity, including walking, enhances the sensitivity of muscle cells to insulin. So as we walk, we increase our blood circulation, which means that the insulin and the glucose in our blood, in our system, is now circulating more effectively through our our body at a faster rate, which creates more of an opportunity for glucose to be utilized. This means that cells are better able to use insulin to absorb glucose from the bloodstream, reducing blood glucose levels. Another means that this works is direct glucose uptake. So the literal act of our muscles contracting during walking or any form of exercise stimulates glucose uptake into the muscle cells independent of insulin. So there are two transport mechanisms for glucose. One is dependent on insulin and the other is independent of insulin. So here we're talking about direct glucose uptake independent of insulin, right? So these muscle contractions help lower blood glucose levels quickly after a meal, irrespective of insulin sensitivity or resistance. Reduction in blood glucose spice can also be seen in walking. First of all, there's blunted postprandial peaks. Walking after a meal can help blunt the sharp rise in blood glucose that typically occurs after eating, especially after consuming carbohydrates. This effect is due to increased utilization of glucose by the muscles. Studies have shown that this impact can be observed irrespective of the quantity of carbohydrates consumed. Studies have shown that just 15 minutes of walking can contribute to a lower post-meal blood glucose peak dampening down the peak by 30%. There's also sustained glucose control. Reducing the peak of post-meal blood glucose contributes to more time spent in a lower range, contributing to our overall time in range and HbA1c. Moreover, there is increased energy expenditure and you're actually utilizing your calories. So walking increases energy expenditure, which means that the body uses more calories during and after the activity. This helps in using up some of the glucose from the meal and also contribute to weight loss if post-meal walking is made a routine part of your day. The second hack that we wanna share with you guys is eating food in a particular order. This helps us improve our post-meal blood glucose reading. So eating foods in a particular order, the order being non-starchy carbohydrates, so veggies first, followed by protein and fat, and then last of all, our carbohydrates. This helps us effectively lower our post-meal blood glucose readings. So a study published in Diabetes Care demonstrated that consuming vegetables and protein before carbohydrates led to a significantly lower postprandial glucose levels in individuals with type 2 diabetes compared to when eating carbohydrates first. Another study found that when participants with type 2 diabetes consumed a meal in which the protein and vegetables were eaten before the carbohydrates, that their postprandial glucose levels were reduced by 29%, 37%, and 17% at the 30-minute, 60-minute, and 120-minute mark post-meal, compared to when carbohydrates were consumed first. 
Research also shows us that in which we consume our foods can influence the secretion of various hormones involved in glucose metabolism, such as insulin, GLP-1, and GIP. So how does this work? First of all, there's delayed carbohydrate absorption. Consuming fiber-rich vegetables and protein before carbohydrates can slow down the digestion and absorption of glucose from carbohydrates. Fiber and protein take longer to digest, which delays the gastric emptying and slows down the rate at which glucose enters the bloodstream. There's also reduced glycemic index as well. This order effectively lowers the overall glycemic index of the meal. Foods with a low glycemic index cause a slower and more gradual rise in blood glucose levels. There's also enhanced insulin response as well. In terms of insulin secretion, eating protein and fats before carbohydrates can stimulate early insulin secretion, which helps manage blood glucose levels more effectively when carbohydrates are subsequently consumed. This early insulin response can reduce the glucose spikes following a meal. There's also satiety hormones as well. Protein and fats also promote the release of satiety hormones, such as GLP-1, which means glucagon-like peptide 1, which not only aid in appetite regulation, but also enhance insulin secretion and sensitivity. There's also reduced postprandial glucose spikes. So experts have found that there's lower glucose peaks. Studies have shown that eating vegetables and protein before carbohydrates can significantly reduce postprandial glucose peaks. This is important for managing overall glycemic control and reducing the risk of complications associated with high blood sugar levels. There's also improved overall glycemic control as well. Consistently following this eating order can lead to better long-term glycemic control as indicated by lower HbA1c levels. Third and last hack that we are gonna share with you guys is super simple, just drinking plenty of water, right? So drinking water helps to lower blood glucose levels by promoting glucose excretion through the urine which improves also our cellular hydration and insulin function, uh, preventing dehydration-induced hypoglycemia. So adequate hydration is a simple yet effective strategy for supporting blood glucose management, particularly for individuals who have diabetes. It is important to combine proper hydration with other lifestyle and dietary measures for optimal diabetes control still. So how does drinking plenty of water water help in a nutshell. Like we said, uh, the more water that we drink, the more that we can effectively dilute the glucose in our system and create the opportunity for that glucose to be passed as urine. So increasing urine output, drinking water increases urine production, which helps the kidneys filter excess glucose out of the bloodstream and excrete it through our urine. This process can help lower blood glucose levels, especially when blood glucose is elevated. The second way that this works is hydration and insulin function. So the more that we drink, being adequately hydrated is crucial for optimal cellular function, including the efficient uptake of glucose by cells. So dehydration can actually impair insulin function and glucose metabolism, which can lead to higher blood glucose levels. So staying well hydrated supports a more insulin sensitive state and also aids in glucose uptake and insulin signaling at the end of the day. The third way that this helps is just preventing dehydration. So as mentioned, dehydration can actually cause blood glucose levels to rise because the body produces more vasopressin, which is an antidiuretic hormone, which effectively signals to the kidneys to retain more water instead of excreting the water, which is how we pass glucose, right? How we get rid of ex excess glucose. So maintaining adequate hydration helps to prevent this hormonal response and supports normal blood glucose regulation and also allows for us to effectively excrete any extra glucose through the urine. All of this being said, if you are looking for practical and easy to implement hacks that actually works, where you can see immediate benefits to your blood glucose, start implementing some walks after your meals, focus your eating your foods in order, and make sure you drink plenty of water. If you like what you heard in this episode and can spare 60 seconds to give us a great review so that the podcast can reach more people, we'd really appreciate it as it can help us change many more lives.